Hello everyone and welcome to the vastness of space. Here in space we have a couple things to teach you. The first thing is you need to be able to breathe. The next thing is you have to be prepared for gravity warfare. Gravity Warfare is for two to six players, about 15 to 40 minutes long for ages seven and up. In the game, you will be performing tasks. Tasks that involve making sure that the uh, planets and or stations that you are placing your different locations on stays steady. When things drop, bad things happen. And if you can manage to keep everything on board and have everybody else topple to their doom into the infinite cosmos, you will win the game. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is gonna be Gravity Warfare by Smart Iguana Games. Gravity Warfare is for two to six players, ages 13 and up, and plays 15 to 40 minutes. In the game, players are gonna be placing down different things on this space station and or planets, depending on the side you choose. They have options to place either spaceships or to place other things like this little stations over here. And they're going to be trying to collect different points, victory points. As you go along, you'll be playing cards on other players to try and mess them up. If you can get them to lose their pieces off the ship and for you to keep yours on, you're going to be the winner. Let's go ahead and check it out. Here we have the contents for Gravity Warfare, and as you can see, it comes with quite a bit of things. First of all, you're going to be getting six different player colors, which will come included with spaceships and two different types of bases in pairs. You'll also get these pair of chopsticks, which you'll be using for something very interesting. I'll talk about that later. Three different die that all do different things and are used for different portions of the game, as well as a full deck of cards, and these things range from challenge cards to special ability cards. You're also going to get a player character that has its own unique special ability, and there's six total to choose from. Then you're going to have point scores over here, which are all these little gems you can use for scoring points. The board itself, which is actually going to stand up just like this, and be weighed down so that it will move, and you want to keep it as flat as possible, as well as the box and the rules, along with the playing reference card sheet. So to begin Gravity Warfare, you need to set up the board itself, and it tells you in the instructions how to do that. You just go ahead and set it up, and it's done. Not only that, but you're going to start with five cards in your hand. In addition, a Guardian card. Only one per player, and the rest are removed from the game. There's a total of six, so that every single player out of the six can have one. You're also going to take all of your uh, plastic figurines, whether they be the spaceships or the space stations, as well as a character card randomly. They all have their own unique abilities. In addition, you're going to start off with five points, and they will be these white crystals here. After you've done that, set them all in front of you and everybody else as well. Make sure you set the deck next to the board, and the game will begin. Players are going to then be rolling die based on the board, so there's two different die for two different board sides, as well as the die for your figures. You roll both die and see where you have to place your figures. Before you do that though, in certain variants, players can choose to challenge you, and that is by playing cards from their hand onto the table to have you challenge. Every single player is allowed to challenge a person, so you can have multiple challenges that need to go out and go ahead and happen at once. And the board kind of, the game kind of lets you decide how you want to make those work. And if somebody wants to take one back, they can. So the challenges are going to be based on uh, whatever is left before you place a figurine on the board. After you place, the next player is going to go. The only time th something would change is when things fall off the board. If things fall off the board and they are yours, you're going to then have to put them back and start to re put them back again. If four of them fall off, you're going to lose the game. And if any of your opponent's pieces fall off and you're putting something on, they get to put it aside and it doesn't count as actually being fallen off. The game's going to continue until a certain amount of points is reached, depending on the different variant of the game. Let's go ahead and check out a few turns and how it works for the basic mode of the game. So we've gone ahead and set up Gravity Warfare for three players. And as you can see, everybody's got their hand of five cards from the deck, as well as their Guardian card. A Guardian card is basically going to let you avoid a specific challenge or undesired card effect. You just go ahead and add that to your hand. There's only going to be one per game per player. The rest are going to be removed. Also, every single player is going to have one of the characters listed here. And uh, it's random as well, and they all have their own abilities. You may combine any two cards and use them as a wild card. You can block or cancel out any one challenge card being issued to you, and you may take back and reuse any card 
card you have already used, except the Guardian card. Keep your discarded cards close to you, so you can always use your discard cards. Here's your deck, you've got your die, and in this variant, as you can see, we have this board right here. We're only going to actually need to use this die right here. This one is for the other side of the board, so we're going to go ahead and set that aside. We won't be needing it. Also, we're going to have the card the die set up over here. Okay, on your turn, the only way you're going to be collecting cards is when you get rid of one of your points, you can draw two and discard one, and you only have a max of, I believe, six or seven cards in your hand. This is your, your chopsticks. You'll be using these depending on the challenge that is being issued to you. Generally, on your turn, you're going to just simply roll dice and then look at the die. This is the location on the ship, and this is the type of thing you're going to be using. So we would take the ship and put it on the blue portion of the spaceship here. So as you can see, it's right here. And make sure this is as level as you possibly can before starting. And you need to place it somewhere on the board. Now, you need to make sure that at least half of the piece is inside the space that it needs to actually be in. So if it's this space, it's here. And if it's this space, maybe it's over here. And if it's this space over here, it's somewhere on this side of the board, as you can see. So it's important that you place at least half of it on the board. Um, another thing to note, too, is on your turn for the base game, other players are allowed to issue challenge cards to you. They can each choose to issue one. For instance, a player can be played playing Don't Look on You. Well, this is the only card in the game, specifically, that doesn't let you play any other combos with it. So when a player plays Don't Look, only you, uh, only this challenge is allowed to be issued to you. So in this case, if it was maybe this this one right here and this right here, I need to place this in the brown area. I'd have to close my eyes and try and place it on the board as best as I can. Oh, now if it's halfway off, it wouldn't count. It had to be at least halfway on or completely inside of it. So if this was the case, if it actually got in there, that would work just fine. As you can see, the board's already tilting with just one piece. This would then be discarded and you will go ahead and draw two cards and pick one for completing a challenge. After that, the next player gets to go. Also realize too though, whenever a challenge is issued by all the players, they're all combined into one challenge. So you only get to get to draw two and discard one for that one challenge, as well as you only get rid of your points to discard to draw, to draw, draw two and pick one. The next player is going to go, and before he rolls, the other players are gonna issue some challenges on him. How about a copy it? So the player must uh, repeat the previous player's turn, same locations and same type of, so basically the same as everything in the last turn. And the next player can say, okay, I want to issue a challenge as well. How about, oh, I don't know, this one here, Antimatter. Uh, this card can be transformed into any card from the deck except for Guardian. So maybe spin it. So now this board is going to spin and he's going to have to try and place this on the same location there. Um, if this says, actually, let me see if it says copy it, previous player's turn, same action, same piece, same zone. Okay, so he wouldn't actually be able to play this because it's the don't look card. So he would just be placing uh, one down on the board without looking onto the board like that. Uh, however, if it wasn't a don't look, it would be a cop. I would be able to do more. So we'll just go ahead and discard this card. He would get to draw two and pick one of them. Put it down. And the next player is going to get to go. Let's see what interesting challenge might happen for him. So, hmm, let's see if we can find something interesting double it. That says the player must uh, complete their turn twice using the same place on the same zone and then bound it. The player must place the piece entirely on the zone. Okay, so these two can work together. He has to do this twice. All right, so we got the spaceship on the yellow area, which is over here. We'll go ahead and move this here. So he needs to place his spaceship on this yellow zone and it has to be completely on it. So he would just do this. And then he'd have to do it one more time because of the double it. And he'd place it like that. Now he's got it going on. And then once again these would go away and the player who succeeded would get to draw two cards and choose one of them. And play would continue until eventually something's going to happen. Something really nasty is going to happen and things are going to start falling off the board because of how light the board is. And uh, if, for instance, you were playing blue and four or more pieces fell, the game would be over and the player who dropped the most, uh, dropped all of them would be losing. And then there's a scoring system depending on uh, who had the most pieces left. 
uh, or the least pieces over here, and you're gonna get in points. And eventually, depending on the variant, you're gonna have the most of these things is gonna equal the most points and uh, is going to win the game. And there's quite a few variants. There's an easy mode, a uh, medium, and then more difficult mode. And if you're playing with just two players, you can actually have each player play with two separate colors, so it makes the game last a little longer. Uh, let's go ahead and go above and talk about the different type of cards, as well as how the player abilities kind of come into flow, as well as how these little blue green things work during the game. So let's talk about scoring a little bit. Whenever you lose four pieces or more, the game's over, and that player is going to lose two points. Additionally, if a player were to play all of his pieces, he would get five points, and there's various different scoring depending on how many pieces you've put down and how many pieces have fallen off. If you check the rules, and it'll tell you, as well as a certain score you're leading up to get. I believe it's about 30 points, if I'm correct, but it depends on the variant as well. Also, what's interesting, too, is you have these green pieces here, and basically what happens is when you roll the die, sometimes you're not going to have the piece required to place. So if you roll a spaceship and you don't have a spaceship and you want to be placed in the blue area, you'd roll one more time. And if when rolling one more time, it still lands on spaceship, you're going to take one of these green cubes or green crystals and pass the turn, which means on your next turn, if it happens again or at any point, you can choose to use this green crystal and then you can actually place any piece you want. So it kind of restrains the amount of bad luck you might be might get. You've also got the two different types of currency. You've got white ones, which are going to be worth one, and yellow, which are going to be worth five. Let's talk about a couple of the cards here. Uh, one of the cards is bound it, which I talked about before. You have to bound it onto this whole, whole area completely. Double it, which means you have to play the complete turn twice. Copy it. The player must repeat the previous player's turn. Same action, same piece, same zone. Don't look. You have to close your eyes while putting the piece down. Uh, return it, return, and re uh, remove and return the last uh, play the piece to its respective player. Ooh. Uh, keep this to take any piece uh, you like from the platform and give it to another player. That's pretty nasty. Uh, return it. You do You do it. You can use this card at any time to force a player and any other player's turn, just not your own, using this active player's pieces. That's pretty cool. And there's a couple other ones that are interesting, like spinning the board and uh, using chopsticks. You'll actually have to take the chopsticks here, and you're going to have to pick up, the pick up one of the pieces with chopsticks as best as you possibly can, and try and place it on the board as best you can. And there's more cards too, as well as different player abilities that all have their own unique bonuses and whatnot. Some of them work better depending on the different variant you're playing. But that is the basic idea for how you play Gravity Warfare. Try not to make your pieces fall, keep them on the board, have your opponent's pieces fall, and give them a ton of challenges along the way. Let's talk about what I think about it. So what do I think about the game Gravity Warfare, right? This game obviously is kind of unique in the way that you're going to be setting up the board. This board is going to be basically a little... Um... Well, Weebly Wobbly Station that is based on gravity and placing pieces on this board that can make uh, things happen. It kind of reminds me of like a game like Jenga or Block It or Blocks Up, all those kind of games. But in this one, actually, you're just starting off with the craziness, and it's just depending on where you're placing it that's going to determine how the board is going to move around. And you'll be using these small little pieces, and you don't actually feel like they would actually make that much of a difference on the board, but they do. And because of that, it can get a little daunting when you want to place them down uh, you don't want to suffer losing the pieces and the challenge cards make the game even more interesting i love using the chopsticks and making people close their eyes and place them down the one thing that would be kind of cool i suppose is making them close their eyes and use chopsticks but i guess that's a little too mean which is probably why it's not used in the game the green uh, the green cubes are, are nice this is going to allow you if you have to lose a turn which sucks because the dice don't roll in your favor that it won't happen again to you you get to actually change that up and usually when that occurs, it's because you're almost about to win the game anyway, so it's kind of a catch-up mechanic, which makes it work just fine. The player abilities are all unique and have their own uses, and I like the fact that you're going to have different placements for all the different types of the plastics. One, some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger, some of them are longer. And from what I gather, the board has got about five or six pieces you can play on one side, maybe seven, and that point is definitely when it's going to drop, so you'll have that kind of foresight that knowledge beforehand if you own this game you'll have a little knowledge before that so i would probably tell people that about seven depending on how good they are at placing that would be probably a thing it might be a negative it might be kind of just a thing you learn as you get better at the game as well as the fact that all of the gravity warfare cards have some unique aspects to them and you can actually use that one special card the uh, guardian card here to make the challenge you have to do 
not as difficult because they can get very, very, very challenging. I really enjoy this game. I love the unique little gimmicky spaceshipy thing. I think it works just fine. And I think it brings a nice new added twist to the game. I like the fact that the board has two sides and you can play with either one. I find this one to be a little more challenging than the one with the planets and the, and the solar system and whatnot. But they both work and they both have their more interesting aspects. I'd probably play the other side with more beginners and then the other side with more advanced or intermediate players as you continue. There is room for strategy. There is room for you to grow in this game and learn different aspects of the game. I've only played about four or five times, and I can already tell you that every time I've played, I've gotten better and better at the game, and I've had more likelihood of success compared to other players. But then again, I might get a little too cocky, because another little added aspect, too, is you can place your pieces on top of other pieces and gain points that way. Another thing to note, too, is, yeah, you can play as many cards as you want on other players' turns, and if it's a six-player game, that's fine, except you're not going to have any cards left, and it's going to cost you points in order to get new cards. Cards. So you don't want to spend too many of your cards just willy-nilly. You, you might want to say, I want to screw with people as much as I possibly can. But when you do that, you're guaranteeing yourself to lose because you're going to want to draw more and more cards up. And it's going to cost you points. So you have to be careful with that. Now, the smartest logical player, like myself, is going to be placing the cards or the pieces down as best as they possibly can, as well as maintaining the cards only in dire situations. But where's the fun in that, right? Overall, I give Gravity Warfare my stamp of approval. It's really interesting, really unique mechanics. I enjoyed this. And when I first saw it, I was immediately enamored with it. And everybody else I play on the table really, really enjoyed the game. A little screams and cries of a failure, mind you, but nevertheless, great. Keeping my collection, my stamp of approval. All right, guys, thanks for watching the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as checking out Gravity Warfare. Woo! This game's pretty challenging, and if you like a little bit of dexterity that's a little different, I would definitely suggest checking out on Kickstarter. And checking out on my website, unfilteredgamer.com. we got tons of blog posts, giveaways, and Kickstarter lists. Our newest blog post up involving a couple cat games, which is interesting as well. As well as checking out my friends and personal friend, my personal friends and family, Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker, everythingboardgames.com, and the Giveaway Geek, three great sources of news and board game related tutorials. So do go check them out. Alright guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to spinning you next time.